I've recently been working with a client that I've done a lot of custom painted furniture for and I'm getting anxious to show you the results. Now she wants me to do a table and this is the inspiration. It was found on DuckDuckGo and she already had the table. Of course I got busy cleaning with white lightning. I keep it dissolved in a spray bottle for easy use. And then of course to rinse. Now this cloth indicates to me that this table will be a bleeder. I considered using bonding boss first, but I decided since the color I'm going to be using is Silk Harbor and it has a built-in stain blocking primer in it and it's a darker color so I think we'll be okay without it. So I do need to give it a scuff sand to take down the shiny surfaces to accept the paint. Again, here's our inspiration piece. It's a very delicate, dainty piece, but our um, color palette is a little bit bolder than this. So we're going to choose it a little bit differently. She has some recliners that are that tealy color and this gorgeous fabric with the black background with the red in it that she's going to have as draperies. So our palette needs to be just a little bit bolder. I put the table upside down on a Lazy Susan and begin painting it. And I find that's a really easy way to get the job done. I paint the underside of the table also because of the fact that this has leaves. You never know if you might see that. It doesn't have to be perfect, but at least it'll look better. After I have applied two coats of paint and let that dry, then I begin to measure in. I measure in three inches from each side and draw a line and then I draw a corner piece. I measure in four inches on each side from the top and then angle that down to the start of the leg. Then 
then I tape all of that off. I use Dixie Belle's sandbar and paint inside the lines of my tape. Sandbar is a chalk mineral paint. It doesn't matter that I'm using that over the silk because I'm gonna be sealing in these areas. After applying two coats, then I remove that, all of that tape. Next, I use the Floral Anthology Transfer from Iron Orchid Designs. I'm wanting to use that triangle shape, so I start to cut up the transfer a little bit. Um, I'm fussy cutting along some of those lines where the flowers are. You don't have to use the transfers exactly as they come. You can customize them to suit your needs. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I had one idea when I started and then I changed it a little bit and made some smaller motifs. And I think it worked out perfectly. I did the same thing for the sides, just kind of designing as I went, using the smaller motifs in the set.
I felt like the inspiration piece had erased molding, so I decided to use the Dainty Flourishes mold from Iron Orchid Designs and Amazing Casting Resin two-part epoxy. I take the castings out of the molds when they're barely formed because I want them to be a little bit flexible. If I leave them in there too long, they're going to be really hard and it's going to be difficult to uh, form them around the curves of the table. I'm using Type On Quick and Thick Glue and just kind of... Uh, taping as I go to make sure that these castings stay in place. Next I use the Reverie stamp and I'm using one of the thin mounts to help me position the stamps. So what I do is I lay them down how I want them and then I place the thin mount down and then adhere those stamps to it. Then I can go ahead and ink up my stamp pad and then just use it repeatedly. I'm using black ink for this. I had considered using a brayer and the gold paint, but I wanted to see some of the detail in there, and that's what the black ink is going to provide. I love how it looks even with just the black ink, but I know it's going to get a whole lot better because there's some gold coming.
I also add a few flourishes on each of the leaves of the table. I'm using Dixie Bell's Gold Digger in the Moonshine Metallics line. I absolutely love this gold paint. Every coat just intensifies the brilliance of this paint. I'm just kind of filling in where I stamped. I also paint along the edge of the table. I also painstakingly paint all of those castings. At first I thought I wanted to do some stamping down the legs, but then I decided against it. So I really love the way it looks, but I still feel like it needs something else. So I apply a second coat of the gold on top of this. As I mentioned before, this paint just gets more brilliant with every coat. After that paint is dry, I then stamp one more time in the same place. This brings back all that detail. I add another coat to the border of the table and then I put the leaves down and start on those inside borders.
I repeat the same process of stamping, then giving it two coats of gold, and then re-stamping it. Remember, I ran out of Amazing Casting Resin, so this side doesn't have the moldings on it yet. This is me trying different stamps, then changing my mind. I finally hit on a design, and then I'm struggling with how am I going to get each one of these to look alike, and I'd like to do this all at once. And then I remember a trick that I've seen Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab do. So if you don't watch her channel, you should check it out. So from Levon to Yvonne, thanks for the tip. I used it all throughout the rest of these legs and it was a great big help. Not only does she add the tape, but I remember her adding a little handle to it too, folding the edge of the tape over so that you can easily grasp it and it isn't sticky. I speed up a lot during this process, but as you know, it takes a lot of time to do all this detail. But I love every minute of it. After two coats of gold, I add that final stamp, and I think that's just the chef's kiss. I've been waiting for this part to get to the wax. So I'm using Easy Peasy Spray Wax. Simply shake the bottle until you can't hear the wax any longer. Then you know it's ready to use. I kind of rub and pat it in, and then I bring on the brown wax. Bestang wax and brown, and this is really the part I've been waiting for. I use a stencil brush and I work it into all the cracks and crevices of the piece, as well as all those molds, all of the details in the molds and all over this piece. If I get too much brown in any place, I can use the Easy Peasy Clear Spray Wax to remove it.
This was how this little lady started out. Let me know what you think of her now. I really enjoyed working on this piece. It isn't exactly like our inspiration, but I think it's perfect for my client's home. I would love to thank you so much for joining me today and for every time you tune into one of my videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with your friends. If you like this content and you want to see more of it, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you won't miss a thing. Also, hit the join button. For only 99 cents a month, you can be one of our channel members. If you'd like to purchase any of the paint products, you can visit my website at statementdesigns.org. Find us on social media as Statement Designs. As always, stay well.